All right, so welcome to the DaVinci Resolve 16 webinar. This is going to be a 40-minute presentation by Future Media Concept. My name is Tibor Spiegel, and we are starting right now. So um, we are going to be dealing with Resolve. If you have not worked with Resolve before, there are numerous versions. The current version is 16.2, hiding my environment, double-checking upper right-hand corner of my primary drive applications and let's just double check and make sure that we have the proper uh, version of it. Um, DaVinci Resolve identifies it as 16.2. When you open up an application like a DaVinci Resolve, keep in mind that you are limited to whatever your default preset is by the starting point. Unlike other applications, and I'm going to name them by name, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, they open up a project, and inside the project, you can have different raster size, different frame rate, and different aspect ratio. In DaVinci Resolve, you decide those things uh, from the beginning. Therefore, when you start a new project in the project uh, window, you should make those decisions. You will recognize that there are some shows already put together. When I say show, I'm talking about the project. And uh, if you start a brand new one, by default, it is going to be labeled Untitled Project. In order for you to find out what the specifications, namely the frame rate, namely the aspect ratio and the raster size, you would right click on it and in the project settings, it would identify that it is set up to be a 19, 20, 10, 80 high definition full raster. The one I'm looking at also has a frame rate of 24. And um, that would presume that uh, we are recording anything and everything that comes in as a 24, which is a film, which is what uh, DaVinci Resolve is meant to do. If you want to change any of these elements, uh, in the timeline resolution, you can drop down and the version that I have, the studio version, I can go up to 8K. And these flavors are all preset. Generally, you are looking for two options. <clears throat> Either you decide what is your output. At that time, the raster size, the frame rate, is determined by your final output. Um, the second option is what do you have most of. When I say most of, I presume that you understand that you will have 60-70% of a specific raster size, aspect ratio, and frame rate. This scenario, we will go with the route of 1920-1080 high definition and we will go at 24 frames per second. Uh, you will need to notice that when DaVinci Resolve works they always uh, up whatever was given to them 10 bit and that is why when you are buying DaVinci or let's call them Black Magic Design because that's the parent company if you buy Black Magic uh, cameras they are recording video in 10 bit. Let's move on when you are opening this up you are defaulting into untitled left Double click opens it up and you will notice on the bottom of the environment uh, number of buttons. First one is media. That is when and where you make your connections. You bring in elements for the show. Cut is a fast paced editing environment, uh, very similar to if you're experienced with iMovie to iMovie. It is a very simple cut, but you and I will now deal with primarily with edit and the color because that is what uh, generally people are coming to us. I will show you how to start. I will put together a quick sequence, a story, and then I'm going to do color grading of it. Each of these elements that I am clicking on, you can use a keyboard shortcut. If you are using uh, Macintosh, the keyboard shortcuts would be Shift 2, Shift 3, Shift 4, Shift 5, Shift 6, Shift 7, and Shift 8. So those will be the ones. They are known as workspaces. So if you go upper center, drop down, the workspaces will show up there. If you want to save a preset, you have a couple of choices. One of them in the workspace, you organize elements and organize it in such a way that it makes sense to you. So reorganize the elements, uh, stretching windows, bringing them down, making uh, different arrangements of it. In the workspace drop down, you click on the drop down and you will activate and say uh, that layout preset is going to be save as a new layout and I'm going to call it new layout new edit so if you have a preset that you saved that edit preset is identifying itself as a new edit load that preset kicks it in 
there we go that's how you did the preset so if you're trying to bring in material into your work area switch from edit into media in the media you should be able to find media storage so whatever you have preset is going to be there if you need to find out where it came from you can route in my case I have an external drive in an external drive I have a DaVinci folder inside the DaVinci folder I have a number of lessons that are part of the 16 so if I go and find out what is in lesson one for example quick cook all the pictures show up you can increase the size of those pictures you can also move around them by just parking on it and hover around it and if you left click it goes into a source monitor and you can play it on a bigger environment you are able to play and stop it check it out if you want to add it to your media pool my numerous options one option would be just command a select it control a would be the windows drag it into your uh, pool and in this scenario the computer identifies that we have a different frame rate than the original uh, material that I'm looking at so you have a choice either change it to the uh, frame rate and aspect ratio of the clips that are coming in or leave it alone and the clips now adhere to the 24 frame 19 20 10 80 that we set up earlier so we don't change it all of them are part of now the media pool and if we switch to edit now they are available for editing how do we know that upper left hand corner open up the media pool so now all the clips are available for us the second way of bringing material in and this is going to be very helpful if you are doing fast pace and you know where your material is minimize your minimize your environment whatever i have right now i'm going to delete it just for exercise purposes so when you highlight something and you hit delete you will notice that uh, davinci doesn't call it delete they call it remove which is a nice little word for removing material from your uh, pool of material to work with anyways so you can also right click inside the bin that is identifying as the box where you're going to get the connection. And if you click on the import media, it now routes you directly on the desktop level to the same place. So if I have a drive, like in this case, I have a drive, I'm going to look for all the material that I'm looking for to bring in. So if I log on to the environment, there is, I have clips, hit open, and they are all connected. Again, still the warning about the frame rate difference, as well as the rest of the size, don't change it, they all come in. These pictures that are in are kind of in the story yet, but they are not uh, saved. The handshake was not recognized. It was not saved. So there are two choices. One choice is you can command S it, and the computer is now saving a specific brand new name of the show. We can call it the webinar. That's one place. But if you're wondering where it went, it went into a database. And if you want to make sure that you have access to that particular um, story now, the particular project, you would have to know where that database is. If you don't really care and you want to have the material taken with you, here is your fastest and easiest way to ensure that. File drop down, export project, which is command D shortcut on the Macintosh control, it would be on the Windows, and you identify where you're going to put it. So for my demonstration, I will put it on the desktop, and in the desktop, I will call it the webinar demo. I'll call it the good one. So, good one. Okay. You notice that there is an extension, DRP, standing for DaVinci Resolve Project. Therefore, when I save it, it should be there. So, with all that being done, look at the icon. This is very similar to what you see in a Premiere Pro, where you have an icon identifying that it is the project. That essentially means that if you shut the application down, let's do that, Command Q, quit. If I want to start the show, the editing, the manipulation, by double clicking on the project itself the project file you should be able to pull up the application so the application should load up within 15 20 seconds depending on the speed of your computer left double clicking on it you will notice that i have a studio 16 which presumes that i have a dongle that allows me to do uh, additional uh, more powerful things than the free version so if you have a free version some of the demo I am showing may not show up, not in uh, quality, but might have a kind of a, a ghost mark on it. Anyways, so it opens up exactly where I left off, and now you see uh, that I have brought in material, and the material is going to be now edited. So if I go into edit, selecting all the clips, depending on how you select them in a ascending, descending. Anyways, right click on it, the dialog box gives you a create new timeline using selected clips. 
Selected clips come out. How do you want to call this timeline? Great demo. The selection of the tracks is limited to up to 99 tracks and the audio is limited up to about 250 tracks. The coolest thing since sliced bread. And if you are wondering about time code and some uh, studios are still very strongly using them, you can start a specific time code at specific numbers by just by typing it in. Create a new timeline comes in. And if you want to see the entire timeline, Shift Z shows you the entire timeline. I have the first, second, third, and in this scenario, it looks like that the hierarchy was not followed by selecting the uh, a single clicking on it. So I have to change it. Selecting a clip, park on it, holding down, command, shift, move it around, take it out. If you want to use some basic editing, here are the basic editing principles. Mark in I, which is mark in and any other application, mark O. And if you want to take things out, here is a quick side note I need to talk to you about when you show up the keyboard shortcuts, command option K, like in Premiere, the keyboard shortcuts come up. And you will notice that in the breakdown, the backspace is registered as backspace, not as big delete. On the keyboard that I have, a physical keyboard, it is registered as delete. So this is where the terminology big delete and small delete becomes very essential. Uh, Resolve uses the small delete to do a specific function and the big delete to use a different function. Let me show you what the possible scenarios are. So if I select an area into out and I use the small delete, it extracts it, command Z undo. And if I use the big delete, it lifts it out. So that's actually a very major difference between small delete and big delete. Small delete extract and we're done. Before I go anywhere further, Command S would be a good idea to do the auto save bypass because auto save at this point is set up to something we don't know. Where does one go for that? Command comma, like in Premiere, you go into your settings and in the settings there should be an option with the user setup where the user says project save and load. That is where you have a live save. To protect yourselves, leave it onto live save which presumes that anytime you do something, it backup is saved unless you want to back it up manually and you say that every minutes or every whatever time window you want to back it up and how many uh, backups for the past hours you can go back in time. So you can either vacillate between or decide between the uh, timely or the live save. So with that being said, we are presuming we're live saving, but we said that it is going into database. So in order for you to save this version, my time on the clock is uh, 3 21. So if I go into the file drop down export project, I will call it it's a 321 version of it. So webinar demo, good one. I don't really want to go more detail that I need to do. So 321 PM. So that's my version. It goes onto a desktop because that's where I decided to put it. And now we're done. So this is one way of manipulating things. You and I will quickly go through a couple of things that are very, very color uh, oriented. Namely, if you switch from the regular edit to go into the color, you would go into the color tool and the color tool opens up and shows you all the elements that you should see. Keep in mind that if you are working on a laptop or even on desktop, you should have the uh, work area set up to be 19, 20, 10, 80, which means that in the Apple upper left hand corner system preferences, you open up your displays and if the display has smaller raster size, like for example, I have a smaller, like a 1600 by 900, that is going to limit the amount of tools that I have available in color. So if tools are not available, the computer will not warn you, tell you, excuse me, I don't have the right raster size. So do make sure that when you are using the color tool, make sure that you have at least 19, 20, 10, 80, because I have a 5K monitor, I have the ability to go 2046 by 1152. When I activate that, now you see that all the elements show up. If they don't, generally, this is always a good place to go to workplace, drop down, and you're going to reset the user interface, which is user interface layout. And now I'm back to where I need to be. You notice that as soon as we uh, open up the color on the bottom left hand corner, we have this area that you're hopefully very familiar with the color wheels and the color wheels are broken down into four gray, uh, areas lift which analyzes the dark environment so if i want to brighten up the dark area use the wheel 
the thumbnail, the thumb wheel would be probably the proper word for it. And the gamma would be the thumb wheel for the midtones. And then the gain is the white one. The offset is the general, so everything is generally adjusted, which means that you're adjusting color as well as brightness at the same time. My biggest problem and your biggest problem is going to be if you're working for broadcasting, you will probably be bound by in America with a limitation of safe colors. And the safe colors in broadcastings were designed way back 1939, April 30th, when electronic television was introduced in these United States. And specific frequencies were assigned to agencies, companies, uh, organizations. Therefore, if you are sending the signal and it's above or beyond some of those frequencies, you might run into some interference. So if you right click on the viewer and you activate the show scopes, the show scopes will give you the choice that you're looking for in terms of identifying what is the brightness and the darkness level. One more time, if you missed it, right click in the timeline viewer, which is actually the clip that you are looking at. If you look at the clip, that's the clip I'm looking at in the viewer. So it's kind of timeline, but it's the edit viewer. So activating the show scopes and you have either a four uh, window two window or a single window option. When the single window comes up, even with the double window, do you have a choice of deciding what is that you want to see? In my case, I'm going to stick with the waveform first. So the waveform in my case is going to be showing the brightness and darkness uh, environment, meaning the darkest frame and the lightest frame. Well, it's kind of, if you're parking on a frame, much easier to understand that you are using the amount of dark and light pixels on that particular frame, on that particular shot. So if I'm playing it, you will notice that it changes when the character walks in, and you can see on the left side. Because I have a loop turned on, everything is looping. When I say everything, I'm talking about this particular clip that is looping. Now, you may see colors on my uh, waveform monitor because in the upper right hand corner there is a slider where you can turn off the colorizing. Now you're actually using and looking at exactly the brightness and darkness. You will notice that the left side has numbers that are labeled from 0 to 1024. Reason being because we are looking at a 10-bit environment when a Da Vinci gets material, it gets it as a 10 bit. Therefore, if I want to identify what is the maximum brightness and maximum darkness, I have to rethink what I know in the past. If you guys are coming from a hardcore broadcasting, you understand the concept of IRE, which stands for industry radio engineers. So if I want to make sure that I understand how that works, I will have to say, well, the 7.5 IRE, which is industry radio engineers for the dark level, and 100 is the maximum brightness, translates to 16-bit and 235-bit in an 8-bit environment. How does that translate in a 10-bit environment? Well, you have to quadruple all those values. So if you had 16, that becomes now 64. And if you had like 235, it becomes 940. So those now are the numbers that are the maximum brightness, maximum darkness. But I have to show them as a reference. So if I increase the density and the graticule, when I let go, you should see a white line above and a white line below. That is basically your broadcast safe and broadcast safe for the low. So how does that reflect on your ability to uh, get something done? Well, here is the first step. You guys may or may not want to do this, but in history, I mean, I've uh, been working with this for a while and a lot of colleagues of mine are doing the same thing. The first node, the first node is generally left alone. So you right click on it and reset it so there's nothing on it. So I did not make any adjustments, which means that I didn't touch any of the tools. I did not change the colors. Nothing is adjusted because I want to leave that first node as a node that has uh, crispness, uh, darkness or anything that is original. So if it's crisp by original, I need to know that. Why? Because it's easy for me to go back to the default. That being the default. You can even right click on it and you can name it and call it default. So how to add a node? Uh, there are two different ways that generally people like to do. Option S is one way of doing that. Another option would be right click inside the dark environment and you add a node. Now the node at this point is called corrector and the corrector is like freely flowing unless you connect it. The signal comes in, that's your original default. I added a node. If I want to add a second node, two choices. One choice is drag it onto the connector uh, line and then it connects it. The other choice is, one more time, 
adenoid corrector and physically break the connection between the second and the end, feed it from the output of two through three. Now you have two nodes connected. Generally, people use the second node for balance. And here are a couple of ways of dealing with the balance. The balance basically means that you will decide what is the darkest and what is the lightest. This particular shot, this particular clip that I have is a perfect uh, candidate for automatic balance. Therefore, if you go on the bottom left hand corner and you click on A as automatic balance, you should see the signal go all the way to the brightest maximum and all the way to the darkest minimum. Why is it bypassing the 64, 940 in 10-bit? Well, it presumes that you're going to end up maybe on Vimeo, on YouTube, or it's a feature. Because I believe that anything that is video has to be played. Command F gives me full screen. So if I hit the space bar, I should be able to play it. If I am seeing a slow zoom, that's what it is. It's playing it back real time. If I want to see without the effect while it's looping, Command D should turn it off and now it shows me the original original we call it log because it is a uh, company generated raw so this is a log footage anyways command d puts it back on command f puts it back on a small size and now we understand what is the automatic balance because this is only one look we can actually turn it off and say hey let's have another node we're going to do a different kind of a adjustment the second adjustment I usually see people use, and I use it myself, is the le uh, setting up the black level and setting up the white level. The crosshairs that you're looking at on the bottom left-hand corner by the color wheels are primarily meant to decide not how the black is functioning, but deciding what will be the darkest element. Let me demonstrate that. So if I click on the crosshair and I click on the woman's uh, clothing or a person's clothing, you will notice that that element is decided to be the darkest element. Command Z undo. If on the other hand, I click again on that color wheel black area and click in the white area, the bright area is becoming the darkest, which is like ridiculous. But that's the basic principle of how the color picker works. So it doesn't make the black black. It decides what you click on that becomes a black. This also brings up the question, how can you zoom in? Upper left hand corner of the window gives you a whole bunch of choices and some of them are presets. So if you are working with a mouse, highly recommended guys that you get yourself a rolling mouse so you can zoom in using the roller. You can zoom in and you can zoom out and it actually identifies what is the percentage. What's the maximum percentage I can go up to? 995. So it's like a 10 times zoom. So if you are zoomed in and you need to move around, again, the mouse roller, you click on it and that's how you move things around. That's really cool. So if you're a laptop user with the uh, control surface, this might be kind of a tricky. You have to figure out how to get this done. So you want to set it back to fit like in Premiere, like in anybody else's. So now the question is, how do I set the black level? I will decide that the dark right corner is going to be the darkest. Click on the dark crosshairs pick on it and use my white picker to pick up the brightness which is coming through the window there we go so now I have a nice setup again the problem I have is that it is going above and below how do you fix it numbers of choices one choice would be just bring down the brightness level a bit and you notice that I'm crushing the darks and the mids if I'm using the color wheel so I'm using the color wheel you can always set the wheel to default to whatever it was original or you can say listen reset the whole thing reset the whole node grade start from scratch you can start with white I have seen people play with that first so make sure that the brightness level is set up first and then you do the dark level uh, at the end of the day for me it doesn't really make that much of a difference my point is that the white is too bright the dark is too dark in order for me to do very specific say hello to your new friends in the center the curves the curves have a line going from the dark area the dark area all the way to the bright area so the bright area if I don't have bright I come down if I emphasize the bright I push it to the left that's something that you guys are familiar with from any other application here's a cool thing if you are using the curves and let's say for just this particular couple of minutes that we will to the right area of the curves, there is a three dot environment where you can add default anchors the default anchors split the environment to 20 percent 40 60 80 and 100 so you can grab only the bright areas to be affected you can see how the bright area is responding so bright area comes down as well as the dark is pushed up so now i am in we call it safe broadcast area
because this is kind of a cool thing. Let's you and I now think about something else. The producers, Command F, would like to see, hey, can we have some kind of a light coming in from the window? Because that would be like really cool because when we were shooting this shot, we didn't think about it. This is where Da Vinci becomes very, very powerful. Guys, ladies, gentlemen, please say hello to your new friend. Again, another node. Option S. At this presentation, you will notice that I'm pretty much sticking to the serial. These are serial. And uh, if you, you know, come back to us, FMC, any training we have or customized training or maybe a webinar in the future, we'll talk about additional notes. But right now, I'm limiting myself just because of the time to the serial. So the node that I added is going to now select a section that I think should be lit up. Therefore, I need to say hello to my new friend, say hello to this new friend called window. These are called power windows. And power windows come in shapes or you can decide what the shape is. In this case, I will decide what the shape is. Therefore, at the beginning, now this is actually working best when you have no much, not much camera movement because otherwise you would have to readjust it. But in this case, you and I will activate and we're going to draw a shape that I think is going to be a good shape to work with. So I'm going to say, hey, the light should be coming in here. It comes not on her back, but goes around her but it lights up her right side visually and if I did my job right I should have a selection you will notice that I selected an area to be manipulated with if I have real estate issues namely I have to make sure that I have a bigger window upper right hand corner turn the clips off nothing actually turned off I only see things in little bricks so if you want to see them back you can turn on the clip and that's on Anyways, you notice that by now that if I select something, it turns white in uh, Da Vinci. So with that, I have a bigger window. The bigger window now allows me to see what I'm going to work with. I am working on the node. And on the node, I will go back to my friend, the curve. And in the curve, I brighten up a little bit that area. So you can see how the light comes in. But the light comes in very strong, very kind of edgy. And I don't believe that light is that kind of very specific. So I need to say hello to the shape again these little dots identify what elements of the curves are active so go back to the shape make sure the shape is selected and make it a little bit softer and it softens it up if i want to see it in a full window command f there we go now the shape is kind of softer command d without only that node command d back with that node and the light is not changing the character is still there now here's a problem when the guy walks in we might have an issue where his hand is overlapping. When I say overlapping, his hand might be overlapping the light coming in. There we go, somewhere. So the light hits him also. So maybe the light is coming a different angle. Command D without it. Command D. Now you understand what I'm talking about. This is actually a cool and very fast way of explaining how the principle of separation works. I will go back into the edit and just identify that I'm going to work with this shot that is the woman shot. The woman shot, the model in color, we could look at it, you will notice again that she is kind of a little bit washed out, but we have no idea. What do you mean washed out? It looks to me washed out. When I manipulate things, I need to see what is real, what is not. Therefore, I need to believe that whatever I'm looking at is accurate. So the keyword accuracy is really, really requiring that I go in the upper left hand corner system preferences and in my scenario I make sure that whatever the display color environment is it is accurate so if I calibrate the machine calibrate the monitor I should be able to make adjustments where whatever I see whatever I see is either bluer or warmer so if I want to see that blue or warmer watch this how things become colder or how it comes become warmer so the reality that I'm looking at on the monitor is really adjustable and that's where people spend thousands of dollars up to twenty thirty thousand dollars I've seen these uh, Flanders scientific monitors that they show you accurately what you're looking at whoa that's a very interesting concept accurately showing what is being given to you anyways so if I use native I'm gonna be pretty much around in this case 6600 unless I change it and I want to have it brighter but then again I'm altering whatever was given to me so I don't know that so this is where you can mess things up big time and say oh it looked very good on my computer but when I gave it to the client the client was looking at things differently anyways so let's quit the calibration let's come back and as we did it earlier option s once twice i'm going to add two um, adjustments and the first adjustment as we have done earlier was right click 
show the scopes. In this scenario, instead of just having a waveform, I will show you another scope. The scope that I'm looking at is generally used to adjust the amount of uh, color, which is called vector scope. The vector scope gives you a uh, red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow positioning. And it seems to me in the quadrant it's going toward the reddish because I have a red uh, dress and red lips. So if I want to make it bigger, again, size again is an issue constantly, real estate management. And I go in there and I push the vector scope and the graticule all the way to the maximum. So when I'm looking at things, I can see that, yeah, there is not much blue in it, it's in the quadrant where the red and the yellow is. Therefore, if I increase, I'm going to turn off the other scopes and just have the vector scope on, real estate management wise, please watch it. If I increase the amount of saturation, bottom left hand corner, color wheel, there is a SAT, saturation. If I increase the saturation, you will see how the colors are more saturated. I have more brown, more red, more everything, and it is identified with the vector scope. So if I bring it down to zero, clearly it would be black and white. And you see that it's in a small, tiny dot in the middle, identifying, signifying it's black and white. To reset the saturation or any of the parameters that are on the bottom left-hand corner, left double-click on it, resets it to normal. Normal means whatever was given to you. With that being said, now let's you and I make adjustments. The adjustment is going to be brightness, show scope, and open it up. Now, if this real estate kind of is always needed for you and you don't want to always open up and turn on, on, turn things on and off, on the bottom right-hand corner, there is a choice where you can activate and put a scope there. So in this case, if the scope is going to be the waveform, the waveform shows up, turn off the color element of it. Hello, turn off the color element of it. There we go. And now we see the brightness. So if the brightness needs to be uh, calibrated. Remember we talked about I don't see the 64, type in 64, which is going to be the darkness and 940 is a light, a lit, <laughs> lightness, <laughs> brightness. Uh, there we go. And the graticule is there. So I know that I'm not really all the way to the brightest, so manually I'm going to go to show you another tool. The tool that we have not really explored in detail is the curves. Say hello to your old friend default anchors, bring up the bright area, push it up slightly, there we go. And this is where you can actually select separate frequencies to work with. Generally, people use the term S-curve, which identifies that you're going to bring things down and set the curves up so it curves like a letter S. And that kind of is a one way of doing that. Without the effect, with the effect. Turn it on and off, you see it, you don't see it. Also, you do a shift D without with it. If I want to play it full screen, Command F, watch it. She's blowing a kiss at us, and we kind of see some wrinkles and some stuff, but I don't know if it's real. Was it the editors who corrected it, or maybe the lens are recording it? So I can make her either prettier or make her more uh, wrinkly. How does that work in the environment that you and I are in? Say hello to your new friends. Bottom left-hand corner, bottom left-hand corner, you have two tabs, one, two. The second tab has a MD, which is standing for mid-tone detail. Please watch what happens to her face. If I want to zoom in, I'm going to zoom in to her forehead, and you can see what I am doing to her forehead. Zooming in maximum MD, I am giving wrinkles to her. The whole face looks like, look at how wrinkly she is. And if I do Command-D without the wrinkles, she's without the wrinkles. Now... You maybe remember this look. We call it the model look. We call it actually in the world that I live in, uh, we call it uh, video Botox. So if you do the MD down to zero, bring it down to minus, hello, turn it back on. Look at how soft the look is. It's that gorgeous soft, everything is soft. Without it, normal look. With it, soft. Everything is softer. It's not defocused, guys. It is softer. Nothing more. It's softer. So I have one more tool that it will uh, hopefully uh, get you into understanding how powerful this program is. I have one more way of manipulating uh, her facial uh, characteristics. So here's a tool that hopefully you will uh, have some fun with. I'm going to turn off the node, add another node, option S. Say hello to your new element, upper right hand corner, open effects, and you can type in, if you don't know what the name is, you're going to type in face. The face refinement is a graphic 
uh, processor unit um, intensive uh, uh, adjustment. Therefore, you throw it onto the element. The computer says, OK, what do you want to do? Watch what happens. There is an analyze option that, in this case, analyzes her whole face. You notice that the face is looking at the camera at all time. There is no movement left, right. It is constantly visible. The two eyes, the forehead, the nose, the lips, the chin, uh, in the forehead. So this is really a uh, additional uh, tool that you can work with that requires very specifics. In this case, we put a mask on her. So how does that let us uh, manipulate things? Well, and if you take the overlay off, let's zoom in a little bit and see if what we can do with her first eye. Let's look at the eye. We can sharpen the eyes a little bit. There we go. Darker, sharper. We can also change the lights of her eyes. There we go. Make it like weird. And we can also have the light up of the eyes around her. So Command D, look at it. I said Command, I'm sorry. Command D, let's look at it full screen. If I turn it off, Command D without it, with it. You have now a tool that gives you multiple multiple layers instead of adding power windows to the eye and track it and follow it this is part of those things that i told you about that studio version has now so far i have done major major adjustments on large footage and the reason why that's important is because i need to show you that my uh, Macintosh is a not powerful but it's a very fast one I'm using Moave I have a three-year-old system I have a quad core i7 and I have 64 gigabytes of 24 speed RAM and 8 gigabytes of video RAM the reason why that's important all my footage was moving real time because in the playback drop down the proxy mode was turned off which means that I was playing exactly keep in mind this is a major important sentence to remember Da Vinci in my scenario did not import anything, even though I said I'm importing. I linked to everything. My hard drive is a solid state. My external drive is solid state. I have a fast processor. So this really works well when you have lots of RAM and lots of uh, speed. If you cannot play it back real time, in the proxy mode, you can change the quality to half resolution or quarter resolution. That is the playback that you have on Premiere or Avid or Final Cut Pro. Anyways, with that being said, my time is running out. You will talk to whoever your um, uh, uh, Future Media Concept salesperson is. And just to keep in mind that at Future Media Concept, we do customized class. We go on site. We do individual classes. Generally, from the last three, four years, we have been doing DaVinci Resolve actively. 60 to 70 percent of our clients are specifically looking for colors they don't really want to spend too much on editing but editing is not a bad thing to work with because you need to find out how the stuff comes in so if you get free software might as well take advantage of it learn how to do edit learn how to do the color and how do you output it here is your output activate your deliver deliver tool is basically your export feature if you want to uh, call it that way so if you want to export something you have a couple of choices how do you customize it? You're going to send it to YouTube, Vimeo, all these other applications, Premiere, Avid, Pro Tools, Final Cut, and so on. In this case, I'm going to customize it. I'm going to call it end of day. End of day. The browser allows you to select where it's going to go because I want to put it on a desktop so you can find it. Click on the desktop, and I will call it end of day, quick time movie and depending on what your speed of the processor is, how much RAM you have, and in this case, how you're going to compress it. I'm going to use it ProRes 422 high quality. By hitting the Browse, identify where it's going to go. By hitting at the Render Queue, puts it to Render Queue, and if I hit the Start Render, I should be rendering it out. While I'm rendering it out, I hope that everything that you have seen so far, even though it was very fast and very uh, rapid. You can always stop the presentation and uh, you can always go back to elements. My name is Tibor. I hope you like this presentation. Thank you for spending time with Future Media Concept and I hope that you guys come back to us. Be safe and this new way of learning things is going to be really, really uh, interesting. So on your end, when you watch your presentation, you need to understand you have to have amounts of RAM that will play back stuff as well as a fast processor. Command H hides everything. Let's see on the desktop what did I have. End of day, double clicking on it, opening it up, playing it out. I have the light coming through. Well, it's artificial. 
we changed reality, guys. Keep, imagine that. And also we changed her reality of face and now that's how she looked. So we didn't have to do makeup and everything is timed properly. Guys, I thank you for your attention. If everything was well, uh, come back to FMC and good luck to you. Thank you.